Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 380 for Monday, April 17th, 2023. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Sponsor for this episode is capoapp.com from Super Mega Ultra Groovy. This is this this app will give you song learning superpowers, and we'll talk more about some of those specifically in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Napomo, California is Paul Kent. How is Napomo today, Mr. Kent? Uh, it's getting to be a little spring out here. It's starting to starting to be a little better. It was a nice weekend. Nice, and uh, you know we're starting to look look to the good weather, the outdoor gigs, and getting back to things. Nice, nice. Yeah, we uh, we're 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 in spring here. I mean, today it was like you know in the high forties and raining or whatever because that's sometimes what happens. But last week it was eighty. This weekend was probably in the you know high sixties or whatever. So it's it was nice. In fact, Saturday we had. Um, the, the the stars aligned for us in bitter pill. We had a band day. It, it turned out uh, we had m- weeks, maybe even months ago scheduled a rehearsal for Saturday. And we found that like starting late morning, like 11 AM is the right time for that band to rehearse. So we'll play like 11 to two, two 30 or something. And then that was going to be it. And about a week and a half ago, the uh, local volunteer run radio station in Portsmouth, uh, invited us to play a benefit show for them on uh, Saturday night. And that's about 15 minutes from my house. A couple of the band members live, you know, maybe an hour from my house. And so uh, everybody was able, it was open on Saturday night, which was kind of a surprise. And so we took the gig, but it meant we had this like, you know, three hour gap in between when we would have stopped rehearsing and, uh, and, you know, when we would like go to load in at the gig. And so, Lisa, my wife suggested, she's like, why don't we have the band just hang and, you know, we'll cook fajitas and chill on the patio and, you know, hang by the fire pit and just like, you know, kill the afternoon that way, spend the afternoon that way. And it was, it was spectacular. We had a great rehearsal. Um, Most of the band was able to stay for the afternoon. We had, we had two of the the band members who had other commitments um, in the middle of the day, but, um, but it, but it worked out. And we really just got to hang and, uh, and it, you know, it, it made the gig feel more like a, kind of a, a, a gig that we had just like, if we had played the night before and we're playing the next night, it felt like there was a lot of flow going into the gig. And this was our first gig since November. So it, it, th- there, are, there is a far greater chance that would, it would have felt very awkward going into this gig. Like, okay, we got to figure out the rust, but we didn't feel rusty going in. We had played that morning, but you know, we had, then we had chilled and just hung out and we were hanging together as a band. And so it really, it worked out really nicely. Um, better, better pills. I was thinking about it. Better pills, an interesting group of people. Every one of us could possibly be described as the most independent person in the band. Uh, you, you could make that argument for for any one of the people. Uh, I, and no one has like a a corporate job. I mean, I'm the closest to that, but um, but I mean, I you know, I'm patently unemployable. I work for myself. We have one guy who's a <laughs> re- realtor. Yeah, you know, I mean, like like I said, everybody you know is is super independent, super. Um, you know, opinionated, but when we're together, we certainly share our opinions, but it's all for the kind of the, the benefit of by and large, all for the benefit of like, you know, making the song the best. And there's very rarely an ego that gets kind of out of control. Uh, mm. I mean, our egos are there, but, but it's always, you know, very much under the umbrella of, well, is this the right, like, let's let's try your idea but is it the right thing for you know for this song or for this or whatever how about if you did it this way and there's a lot of collaboration i think that's it i think we we prioritize collaboration in this band for whatever reason i and i'm sure there's a 
uh, I'm sure there is a reason or multiple reasons for that, uh, that, that we have that dynamic, but I am, I am thankful we have it. And I, I think it's, it's an important, um, it's an important dynamic to try and, and foster, I guess. I, have but you I, always felt it? Did you foster it? Did it organically mesh? I mean, how did you come to this understanding that this is what your band is about? Um, I mean, it. I, like, I think if you had asked me a year ago, I would have given you the same answer. Uh, but Saturday, for whatever reason, I, you know, probably because we were just hanging together for the day and we had like on time and off time, you know, d- downtime together. It was just like I had a I had moments to like sit and reflect as opposed to all right well we got to do this okay now we got to load in now we got to play the gig now we got to p- break down you know there were there were lots of sort of downtime moments where we were still interacting with each other and I was like yeah look at this like we can all be real jerks I'm sure it you know in our own right and uh, you know I, I'll raise my hand first on that one but you know with the band it it's every it's, it really is like we have a shared mission. And I think that's that's always been the case with this. So band. That's so interesting. Do you remember we got that note? I, th- I think it was one of the things we we're answering to last time, where the guy said, "You know, bands are great when everybody's like, let's go conquer the world together." Yeah. And my response was, "You don't really get that so much in adult bands, do you?" And you're kind of saying it in a different way. You're kind of saying like, "Hey, we have some original music. This might actually work. Isn't the dream? Isn't that the dream? To you know." find people who can bring original music to life and we're all kind of clicking and we're all kind of going in the same direction. This feels right. We may have a chance here, right. In a, in a, in a, in a world that those things are hard. Yeah. Fair. fair? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I mean, I think there's a realistic uh, component to this too. Like if there were an opportunity, let's say for, you know, bitter pill to go on the road for a couple of weeks, Everybody could theoretically, everybody could carve that out of their schedules and easily, not easily, but, but I think there's, there's a gr- a good chance we could make that work. Right. And furthering the band and, and, you know, pushing it forward and, and doing it in that way, uh, I think would, would be there, but we also see the, uh, the ability to have success as a local original band as well. Uh, you know, it's success defined as what? Oh, it's success to find is, I mean, you know, we, we packed this little place the other night. People are always interested in our music. We've got, you know, folks that start coming out to gigs and then they're buying t-shirts and learning the lyrics. And like, there's, mm. there's all those, like all those little things that just happen with this band. And, and you know, I mean, it's not, I, I'm not sitting here saying, oh gosh, I, I wonder why, like everybody can play. The songs are fantastic. Everybody knows how to perform in this band. We're an engaging yeah. band, right? I mean, there's, there's like the, the, the fundamentals, the blocking and tackling sort of things are, are there, right? We, we, we know what to do and we are interested in doing them. No one, no one shows up at the gig, at, at least from my perspective, no one shows up at the gig and is like, well, watch how I'm going to play tonight. You know, it's, it's not that kind of a band. <laughs> it's, it's watch how seen my fastball. You know, yeah, you haven't seen my fastball. Exactly. But it's, it's more like watch, watch how we as a band are going to slay tonight. And, and we really like, it works out that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's just, it's a, it was a, it was just a nice kind of, you know, thing to, to sit back and, and, you know, as I was sitting at the fire pit, watching everybody just kind of, you know, chit chatting and chilling and all that stuff. It's like, oh yeah, look yeah. at this. We could like any one of us has the capability to, to like blow this whole thing up and be a total jerk about it if we wanted to, <laughs> but no one wants well, to, you, you know what I mean? Like we all want to make this work. And, and so we, we use our egos as tools and, and manage them, I guess. But if you got into a band, if you got into a band where you even detected that one guy could potentially blow it up. Wouldn't that be a, wouldn't that be a waving red flag about what, what the likely path, you know, I've been in that heartache band. would be. I've, I've, I've yeah. been in that. Band. Was, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Everything is, everything is good when it's good. Everything yeah. when it works when it works. Yeah. The question is what, what happens when, well, there are several questions. One is how good are you and how good is everybody in your band at, discerning at reading the tea leaves, right? 
All right. Hey, our sponsor for today is Capo from Super Mega Ultra Groovy. Look, we all need to learn songs, right? It's one of the things we do all the time. And when we're doing that using like the standard music video players like Spotify, YouTube, Apple's music app, all of those make it really hard to move around in a song and find that right spot that we want to hear again and then loop it. And even with the ones that let you change the playback speed, YouTube, when you do that, it sounds awful for music. Well, this is why we love Capo here, because Capo gives me song learning superpowers. Capo's got this transcription playhead that gives precise control over playback start point, helps you learn in chunks and loops. And of course, when you slow down playback, even at a quarter speed, it sounds great because Capo was built using high-end studio quality audio stretching technology. That's just sort of the, the basics though. Capo does a ton more. It'll detect chords. It detects beat locations. It's, it's amazing. You got to check this out. And Capo is completely free. When we say free, we're not talking about the VC backed growth hacking industry's definition of free, right? Capo doesn't make you create an account before you can get into the app. It doesn't show you any ads either. They're, they're not tricking you into a sneaky free trial or anything that they're hoping you'll forget about. The developers are fine with you using Capo's core features for free. They're betting that you'll eventually fall in love and maybe you want to pay extra for more or you'll tell your friends about this great free app and one of them might buy the extra features. The folks at Capo, the folks at Super Mega Ultra Groovy are in this for the long haul and you got to check it out. You've got nothing to lose. Visit capoapp.com or search for Capo in the App Store for your Mac, iPhone or iPad. Again, Capo by Super Mega Ultra Groovy. So much fun to say. C A P O A P P.com. And our thanks to Capo for sponsoring this episode. All right. So I, I interrupted you there, Paul, because you asked a, uh, a loaded question. Um, how, you know, how, how do you read the tea leaves? I think was the, uh, the well, the, the net uh, what it, I'm right? saying is, is that's the, that's one of the skills. One of the skills that's probably useful in keeping a band together is, is a shared, a shared understanding of tea leaves and the, and the mm. shared, Ability to wait what you might see reading the tea leaves, right? Sh share, like the said, sharing of the tea leaves. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, the premise is everything's great when things are going great. And I think I've told you, like, my big strategy with the House Rockers was to keep people working. Book the band, keep people busy, and they will be focused on your project and those sort of things. That worked for a really, really long time. Yep. Work. But then it became, well, you know, how how good are the things that we're booking? And and you know, we've been doing this for a while. Shouldn't we get more pay here? You know, and, and you know, things are moving and the ability to really read the room, like, all right, six of my guys are happy how things are going, but three of my guys, you know, would rather not play as much but make more and the ones that we're playing. Or, or, you know, whatever it might be. We do want to take charity gigs. We don't want to take charity gigs. I mean, all these different types of things and trying to keep the the hive mind of your band, you know, somewhat on the same frequency. That's, that's the trouble, Kenneth. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, it's, it's hard, right? Like, I wish I could tell you what we did in bitter pill to, to create this vibe. And it's not the, it's not the first band I've had that vibe with, but and I've had that vibe with bands where it falls apart too. But um, I, I think the, there's a, um, there's a trick, there's a maturity, but there's a trick to being strong willed, strong minded, creative, and still prioritizing collaboration over all else. It doesn't mean prioritizing consensus over all else, right? Because there are, there are times when it's like, okay, well, th this is, this is what we're doing. This is, you know, the set list we're going to play. I mean, it like decisions need to be made and 
not every decision will be made by consensus, right? Like that, that generally results in terrible things. Like, well, I, I think more, more what I'm saying is what happens when things change over time. So if you, uh, if you start out as a group willing to take on the world or a group that, you know, Hey, you know, we've got something special here. Everything's good when it's good, but over time, things change. People's situations change, new, new significant others, new jobs, new yeah. time availability, new musical tastes can, you know, can yeah, emerge can evolve, new sure. emphasis and yeah, new emphasis of things you want. These are the forces that are out there waiting to destroy your band, <laughs> right? These are, these are the enemies at the gate, you know, that, that are, are, you know, ready to take group, whether it's together six months, a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. These are the things that constantly maneuver. And we espouse, you know, good communication as, as the key to everything. It's, I'm going to kind of call BS on myself here because <laughs> okay, <laughs> g- good communication is not a black and white thing and it, and it's situational. Yeah. And in, and in a band, you know, the one disaffected guy who never speaks up, you know, he's not having good communication and your ability to, you know, bring him back into the fold is a reflection of your leadership or, you know, or, you know, the brotherhood, sisterhood, familyhood that your band represent. I mean, it's, Bands are hard. Yes. They're easy when they're easy, but really bands being made up of humans, which is the fault in the whole thing, um, is <laughs> bands are hard, right? Band, bands are hard. Yeah. I mean, any, you know, I'll call it a partnership um, because it, there's a lot of similarities to like being in a startup, right? It, you know, it, it's, it's, it's similar to that where, you know, you're creating something together uh, it, it's not like there's, you know, an, ex, an existing company that's just hiring people, right? Like you're coming into this together, even, even, even if it's, you know, with bitter pill, I mean, it certainly started as Billy's project. Right. And, and I think, in a, I don't think anybody would disagree. It still is Billy's project. I, that's certainly my interpretation of it, but that's, but it's, it's not like, he's the leader who says what goes and no one has a voice, right? It's, it's exactly the opposite of that. It's everybody has a voice. Um, he, he is certainly a very, very, very strong creative force in this. Um, he's not the only one writing songs, um, but he writes a lot of them. Emily writes a lot of them. John, our guitar player has written a few and there's, there's more coming from him too, but everybody collaborates on, on creating this stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know what the, it, bands are hard. You're, you're right. Like it's, it, and, and this isn't to say that Bitter Pill will always be great. Like I said, any one of us has the capacity to crater it at any point in time. Yeah. And, but that's, uh, you know. that's actually really useful because that's useful for everybody because everyone always has some leverage and some choice in the situation. It's an at will relationship absolutely right billy yes. billy if he's a leader or owner or whatever you want to call it he actually could say you're not working out to bring my music to to life or to bring this band you know to fruition mm-hmm. he can you know er, and actually in that tension is the good thing like it, right it, i i have several guys in my band um who it's an interesting dichotomy as we playing less and the guys are out doing things. They now have a new leverage. Their availability is, is an issue, right? Oh, yeah. You know, sure. they're, they're doing other things that make them money, bring them happiness, you know, allows them to create. And then there's the house rockers, which hopefully still makes them happy and, you know, makes them money and, you know, in a different way allows them to create. And in that, if there's a conflict between those things, I can say, this is what I need for you to be a house rocker. And they say, here's what I can give you to be a house rocker. Or, you know, I have, I have choices, right? Yeah. Everybody has choices, actually. That's, that's kind of the point of this. Everybody always has choices, right? You know, regardless of what you play, if you're not happy in the group you're in. You can go form a group, join a group. You, know, you can go do something else. Yeah, there's options. Right, right, right. And, and everybody has choices, especially when it's not the primary source of income, right? Like, Right. Any, and this is, I, I actually, I don't know if this is true of, of your band, but in bitter pill, 
certainly we all appreciate the money that we're able to earn, but we do hold back quite a bit of the money that we earn as a band so that we have money to go in the studio and produce our music and, and get that out there and buy t-shirts that we can then sell. I mean, it, you know, we're funding the business aspect of this as we go. Yeah. Um, but so, so what that means is whether or not someone is in this band, they're still able to put food on their table. Like it, it's a separate thing. And, and so unlike a business and, you know, depending on how your startup is organized, maybe you organize your startup as a cash cow. So it needs to organize, you know, it needs to generate cash quickly, or maybe you generate it as like, or you start your startup as like, well, we're just going to hopefully sell it off at the end, but we're all going to just pay for our lives. Like it's, it's definitely the latter with most rock bands, right? Where it's, it's, it's just, you know, extra money, but it's not the money that we rely on. I realize in your band, there's, there's some guys that are full-time musicians. Mm -hmm. And so the, the house rockers money may or may not like be, I don't, I don't know what, you know, if it's a significant part of their, their revenue stack or, or what, but, um, but yeah, it makes it, it makes it far more at will and therefore far more leverage, uh, to just say, yeah, this isn't working. I'm, I'm going to walk away. And, and there's, there's, you know, some comfort in that. But in understanding the concept of leverage, it really helps you to understand if, if you're a band leader or, you know, if you are, even if you're part of a democratic band, yeah. you know, these are the essences that the, that, that, you know, managing body of the democratic yeah. band have, you know, and so what are they like, Hey, you're playing with a bunch of really good guys or guys and girls, yep. right? You know, th these are, yep. these are nice people to be around. B, uh, we work as much as we all agreed to work more, you know, wh whatever, whatever that number is, that that's another leverage. We said we were going to be a once a month band. We deliver on that every single month. You know, you yep. said you wanted to be in a once a month. We're doing that. Um, you know, it could be creativity. I don't tell you what to play. You, you know, we, we don't, we agreed. We're not learning things. Note for note on the record. Or we agreed. We are learning things. We're all invested in doing that. You know, that's, that's another point of leverage. Pay is another point of leverage. Um, you know, frequency of, you know, my point being is that in understanding when things are going wrong, it could be helpful to stick on the wall all the things you said you would do. And if someone is not happy with those things anymore, it's hard to get them. Something has changed, right? Again, yep. it could be their personal situation, financial situation, whatever it is, something has changed. And to my experience, you can remind that person of all the things I said, I would do this and we're doing this, or here's where we are on, against this. But if they become disaffected, it's hard. It's everything's really hard. great when it's great. Everything's great when it's great. And everything's not great when it's not great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. No, and that, and, like, we had that in, in Fling and, and that, like, what you just described there was why our old bass player, Burke, decided to leave. And it, it they're like. There's, there was no bad blood or anything. We all still get along very well, but his tastes and desires and needs from the band or needs from his musical endeavors, I should say, diverged from what Fling was doing and, and wanted to do going forward. And so it was like, okay, like you're not happy with the, with all the songs that we're playing. You want to, you know, he wanted to, he's a huge Grateful Dead fan. I, I think he would love playing in like a Grateful Dead tribute band or something like that. Uh, you know, Fling was not the right band to be covering Grateful Dead songs. And, and we tried a few and it just, you know, it was like, no, um, it just wasn't the right the vibe for, yeah. for, you know, for that, that those musicians, the us musicians um, that, you know, that group of five was not the right one. And, and, but I mean, he was in the band for over 10 years, uh, it, you know, and it, it, it like when, when we, when he started with the band and probably for the first six or seven years of it, everything, we were all in alignment on that. And, and then his, his desires, you know, evolved and that happens and it's fine. It like, I was glad that it was something we were able to handle without having a situation that I would have to describe as like probably something I wouldn't even talk about on the show. You know, <laughs> like if, it, if it had ended in fiery death, I don't know that, we, you know, I would, I would be comfortable sharing that, but it didn't, you know, there was never a, a, a you know, an F you moment or anything like that. It was like, 
he was like, Hey guys, you know, I think we all know this is, you know, this, this is not moving in the right direction. I don't want to hold you guys. It, it was, you know, it was very, uh, respectful and all of that stuff. And so, yeah. So check it out. It could have become a real cancer kind of thing. It did not. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I could, I could probably point to a couple of moments where that, that friction had the potential to grow into that cancer in the band, but, but it never actually got there. There, you know, there were moments where I was actually very concerned that it was going there. And because when that happens, it happens very quickly, right? That like, was going to be my point. Exactly. Yeah. So if, when that disaffection raises its head, hoping that it goes away or having unshakable faith in your superhero communication skills <laughs> is a risk because yeah. <laughs> once you let that disaffection take place, it's not always that the other people in the band go, Oh, that guy really what ter often turns into is, Oh, this situation is just not fun anymore. Right. The whole it, thing, you know, there, yeah. there becomes, there becomes, you know, division of perspectives of how to handle the situation and all these types of stuff. So well, in any collaboration, everyone is making sacrifices or, or contributing to it. I don't want to say sacrifices, but everybody's putting in what they can to keep the, the, you know, the band, the project moving forward. And as soon as you've got one person who's like, I'm only going to do it. If then everybody, it's very easy for everyone to say, well, I'm also only going to do it if. Well, this is why choose carefully is so valuable. Like yeah. you hear so much about people. I put an ad on Craigslist and, you know, I got one guy and I needed, I needed a bass player. So that's my, that was my only choice. So might as well take him in. Mm -hmm. But really, if you think about the long game of this, yes, it may work. You know, and there's, it's not black and white, but did you really vet that it's a good fit? Right, you not can't. that they just. That's the thing. Can, it's so hard. Well, it is. Well, you know what is that? Joe versus volcano. I know he can get the job. Can he do the job? <laughs> Joe, can we take a minute and applaud Paul Kent for finding a perfect you, moment to reference Joe versus the volcano? No brain fog involved at all tonight, folks. This is. <laughs> yeah, I have no response to that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you do the job? Because the job is being, being a, a part of the group, being a yeah. band member, not just yeah. playing your acts. Yeah. 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 You know, I have one <clears throat> of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> one of the situations I have started is the Paul Kent band. Is that the one this is the in your new this area? Is the coffee house band. Oh, no, well, okay. actually, I have, I have, I have one in each area, okay. you know, and it's mostly the same, the same repertoire. P PKB and North and PKB South, right? Pretty much, right? Yep. And the premise there, which is a the result of lessons learned from running, starting and running the House Rockers, is literally, I'm just going to, I'm not going to leave anything. It's going to be called the Paul Kent Band. I'm going to sing all the songs. I'm going to pick the songs. All you got to do is show up and play. Are we yeah. agreed? And, and my ability to communicate that more succinctly and specifically, I don't have anybody to sign anything, nothing like that. Sure, sure. But that actually, those situations, and you know what? I am fully prepared at any time that someone in either of these groups could say, eh, yeah, not, not available, not interested. Where they, I totally get that that could happen. I don't, I don't put faith upon faith that it won't happen. I hope it doesn't happen. You know, just makes things more complicated. But, you know, I know who the players are. I've got my songbook ready to share with somebody and, you know, and Spotify playlist to get someone prepared if I need someone. Uh, and it is somewhat freeing. But I recognize it is different than the enormous rewards I get being part of the house rockers and how much I enjoy everything that that is. I enjoy the musicality of it. I enjoy the guys, you know, but I am... Even though I started it, I wasn't succinct enough in the organizational principles going in. Largely, I mean, the guys would say I'm the, I'm the leader, but they do, the vibe of the band is they feel like I put in, I'm entitled to say I'd like to sing X amount of songs or I'd like to, I'd like us to play certain songs or those, those types of things. And that's, that was 
that was a, a series of decisions over the maturity of the band that kept the band together at some different times and that, that type of thing. I'm okay with that. I, I had to learn to be okay with that, but I'm okay with that. It, you're, yeah, you, but, you, yeah, you, you, you evolved too, it turns out. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, really, life is the pursuit of true oneness with the concept of leverage. I mean, it, I mean, that's really one of the ways, especially in semi-professional music. Yeah. You know, that you are prepared for all eventualities. You, you know, literally nothing is guaranteed for tomorrow. And, um, you know, understanding, understanding that disaffection will raise its head from time to time with different people in different ways over time. What happens? I mean, some people just get so frustrated at the first sight of it that they, you know, the, here we go again and fold, I'm out. fold shop and yep. yeah. But, you know, bands as the great little Steven Van Zandt says that a, a working band that works, not, not works means gets a paycheck, but, but a, a band that, a band that functions you know, pr productively. Functions. Yes. Yeah. It's such a rare thing, you know, pick people that will do everything in the pursuit of the nobility of that cause. Like, and I, I would say that one of the great things about the house rockers that people love is that it's a band. Yeah. The idea that a bunch of people on stage who at least give off the, you know, very serious vibe that they enjoy each other, get a kick at each other and, you know, create a, create a there, there, that is a, a social construct that people aspire to. It resonates with people. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know? I, I, yeah, I, yes. I, I, that, that is palpable from the stage when you're playing, when I'm playing in a band that conveys that it is a band, people, like people feel more comfortable. They feel like they're, they're attending something that's, they're part of something. Whereas if, if it's just, you know, four musicians on stage, hired guns, playing songs, I, like that, you know that too, and it's a different vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's that, the yeah. band. The band vibe is a, definitely a thing. I and it's. It, I like it. I like it when I'm in it, and I like it when I go to see it. I, for sure. Yeah. Well, we think about the bands that we. You think about the bands that you grew up idolizing. I mean, you don't really know what the social construct was behind them, but you think about bands. You think about those guys or yeah. those girls or the, or that band. Yeah. And what it what it felt like to go see them, and you know that's probably a large reason why a lot of people are musicians is because you grew up feeling that as you as you absorbed music. I'll you know, never was, forget when I was going uh, to see that weather report show in like nineteen, I don't know, eighty one or something. I was like ten years old or whatever. Um, I remember my dad. It was it was definitely my first real concert. And I remember my dad telling me, he's like, because I was asking him, like, what's this going to be like, you know? And, and he said, yeah, you'll see him on stage. We playing the music. He's like, but, but they'll also be like joking around with each other. Make sure you watch for that. He, he's like that. That's the part that's really cool to see. Cause they're going to sure. be playing the songs, you know, or, and probably some songs you don't know, like that's possible, but look past that and, and watch for the interaction. And, uh, you know, that's one of those things that, that like I, 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 I watched for it. I remember seeing it. Um, and, and it has stuck with me, uh, as, as an important element of performing as a band is those moments where, you know, it's the, 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 the nonverbal, sometimes it is verbal, but also nonverbal communication, but, but that on stage communication is, a, it's awesome. I love it when it happens. Well, and sometimes it's when just a, a look. Kid. Yeah. It just to, well, you think about it as a kid, you think about holding those albums in your hands. You knew the names of all the players that were in your favorite bands. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You knew the bands, right? And then you go to see them and the lights come up and there they are. There are the guys. Yeah. And they're doing that thing that you know you you, you know you you're so excited to see. Bands are a thing. And they're you know, they're they're worth the effort for sure. Pain in the butt as they may be sometimes, you know, when it's good, it's really good. Yep. I mean, I think we've spent a whole episode saying that when it's not going good, figure it out if you can. Yeah. Or call a spade a spade before it brings everything else down if you have to. If you have to. But, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. Find, f identify the cancer in your band. It, it, like, hopefully it doesn't exist. Like, I'm not saying cancer exists in every band, but if it does, 
I, like eradicate it because yeah. otherwise it will take the band down with it. I've, I've been there. The other thing to eradicate folks, uh, a couple of technical things that I've been through recently, one not so good and one quite good. Uh, Mac OS Ventura, which is Apple's current operating system came out about six months ago in the fall. There is a major issue with what I, I, I guess if they have confirmed that it's how it, and they have confirmed with me that this is how it's supposed to work. Uh, I can't call it a bug, but I can call it a change. Uh, they have changed the way aggregate audio devices work. If you're using logic, you're almost certainly using aggregate audio devices. That's a thing where you uh, use the, the Mac OS system to combine multiple audio devices together, which is sort of how you have to do it with, with a lot of DAWs in order to really get what you need together. They've, they've broken, sorry, they've changed <laughs> the way aggregate devices work. And anytime anything happens on the system, like that, that starts a new audio stream somewhere, your aggregate device will go offline for somewhere between half a second and several seconds. It can be a real, real problem. So I've, I've rolled this studio machine back to Monterey. Uh, so I just share that with you. Cause I know a lot of folks leave their, their audio rigs on an old version of the operating system for years. And the reason is exactly things like this. So, uh, I, I share this because hopefully you don't have to go through what I went through. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it because what I did was if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And then I had to roll it back, which was a fun day, but you know, the thing that's good is, uh, then and, and is worth the changes. Uh, ozone 10 from isotope came out. This is the mastering suite that I have really become enamored with over the past few years. Paul, I, I, I used ozone to master all the fling stuff and not only has ozone gotten better, but, my ability to use it has gotten better too. I think I mentioned a couple episodes ago that I listened to the first fling EP and the most recent one. And I, I want to go remaster the first one. So I might, but they've added some cool modules to this. Um, they, they've got this stabilizer module that really helps kind of, um, it's, it's it uses adaptive EQ so that you can, shape your mix without having to like apply changes to everything you, you with, with the adaptive EQ, you get to apply changes to the parts that need it and not to the parts that don't, which is a really powerful thing. And, and they've had, they've had things like this. There are many tools like this in uh, they've got a, just a dynamic EQ tool, but this stabilizer really helps with things like harshness in the mix uh, that I've, I've found. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to use this and the new impact module, which lets you, uh, control the dynamics of things and really help kind of sometimes when, when I'm mastering, when anyone's mastering, you want to pull out the parts of a track that are supposed to really pulse like a low end thing, but it's not always just the low end, you know, something that really gives a, a, a track the bounce and this impact module allows you to do this on different frequency bands. So you can, if it is the low end, you can have that provide the impact without uh, getting in the way and, and causing that sort of pumping that compression will often do in the higher bands. So you, you really just kind of keep it in the low band. And then the other thing that I love about, ozone and this has been there for a couple of versions and it's still there in version 10 is the imager which lets you again buy frequency band and you get to define these frequency bands you don't you're not stuck with some predefined ones but you get to use different frequency bands and de decide how much of a stereo field you want them to have and you can actually make so sort of the mid-range wider you can make the low end narrower and really kind of give your mixes some breath and some space so um if you're if you're into the mastering thing or if this sounds interesting to you, go check out Ozone Ten because I'm cool. I'm super excited about it. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I haven't know. I haven't done a full project with it yet, but our friend Brian Chaffin uh, sent me a song the other day, and he's like, I, you know, I've, I've been mixing this this song. It's a song you wrote. He's like, I've been mixing this for a while. I feel like it just needs something, and I'm like, yeah, let me just like send me the 
thing. I I want to I want to play with Ozone Ten, so this is a perfect opportunity, and uh, and it was it was fun getting to play with some of these things and really kind of bringing out the, you know, some of the things in the track. And he was actually happy with it. And then and then he was like, Oh wait, now that you've done this, I might need to fix that. And I'm like, Okay, so this is what Russ and I do in Fling when we're recording things because Russ does all the mixing and I'll like be his ear for that. And then when we get to where we think we're done with the mixing, I'll start playing with the mastering. And that often brings out some things that we might want to change in the mix. And so it becomes this collaborative process to get, to get to the end. And, uh, and we've gotten pretty good at it. I would like to say, so I, I look forward to the next fling EP. But. We'll get it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's what I have. Fun episode. I like to, uh, I like so to, philosophical. Very philosophical. Yeah. I don't know that we answered anything, but we certainly, uh, we had a, we had a couple of moments. So mm-hmm. I like that. You got anything else, man? No, I'm, I'm spent. <laughs> Same. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Make sure to go to capoapp.com. Check out Capo from Super Mega Ultra Groovy. Just say that. Super Mega Ultra Groovy. It'll make you want to download Capo and you'll be happy when you do it. What's that thing we say? Always be performing. Always.